On today's landscape lesson, we're going to be talking again about garden trends. And this is one that people are also very interested in. It combines diversity of plants in the landscape with edibility, with beauty, with perhaps being able to grow even more of your own food. We had a segment earlier on seeds, and of course I have some seeds in front of me. I also took a quick trip to the grocery store. Not much to find that is really truly fresh produce right now in the grocery stores that came from here, of course, since it's the dead of winter, but some unusual vegetables. So a lot of our gardening friends and a lot of the world is really interested in plants that are interesting in color. So let's start with this. This is an attention getter. This is something that you can actually buy seeds for. This is radicchio. Looks like a tiny little head of cabbage that just decided to go to a beautiful party with the white, with the purple, with kind of this tight head. You too could grow this and then decide to eat it. If we look at another vegetable that is unusual, this is artichoke, of course. Now, the great big green giant globe artichokes are not going to ripen fully in Nebraska unless you start them and baby them. But there are artichokes that you can grow from seed. Start a little earlier than this, perhaps next year. But it's a beautiful vegetable. It's in the thistle family. So if you decide you don't want to eat the artichoke, you can let it open and become this incredible, beautiful structural plant in your garden. Of course, greens and microgreens are always popular. You can buy seeds for almost any combination you want. And that, of course, means you can start them early. You can start them in the house. You can grow them not all season long necessarily because so many of our small greens and our lettuce crops and our spinaches and Swiss chard really like those cool temperatures. So you may have to take a bit of a break in growing them over the summer months, but you can, you can start them early. You can grow them for quite a long period of time. You can grow them again in the fall. And they are good either sauteed. They're great if you put them in salads, of course. This is actually a combination of two different types of Swiss chard and arugula, and there's a little tot soy in here or perhaps a little bok choy to be able to grow in the garden. So tiny little greens, lots of vegetable sorts of dishes available for this. Going back to our idea of color, people don't think about peas or beans as having purple pods, and we have some beautiful beans and peas that have purple pods. They also climb. So that vertical gardening that we talked about a bit earlier on, on a previous show is a great opportunity for you to not only add that diversity in your vegetable garden and of course then to your table, but get something in a much smaller space that also has the really highly attractive color to it as opposed to really the more traditional purple or the more traditional green in the garden. A lot of people love carrots, and carrots, rainbow carrots have been around for quite a while, whether they are an heirloom blend, a newer blend, um, kind of unusual br blends. There's one that's a bright red one right now. Carrots are not the easiest thing to grow unless your soil is really, really light and loose. The long ones, of course, also have some issues that we talk about on Backyard Farmer with all sorts of unusual, interesting insect pests down below. But you can also get that rainbow blend in radishes. And so there used to, there's a blend called Easter egg. Well, this one actually adds in some of those brighter colors. So if you're worried about getting those long, long carrots in a garden and you still like the kind of the bite of radishes, you want that color in your, in your vegetables, you can try the radishes again. And of course, they germinate very, very early. So that gives you a chance to start early, get them grown, pull them out, start over again with something else. There are people who really like beets. There are people who don't. People who do really like beets, and some of the most beautiful ones are the golden beets. So another unusual crop to try in, in the garden because the typical beet is, of course, a red one, and the golden beet slices Roast does all those things for roasted root vegetables that so many people are really enjoying in their kitchen these days. Cucumbers come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. And this is one called lemon cucumber. Again, it's an, it's, uh, an heirloom. There are multiple others, little tiny dill pickling cucumbers. 
but this doesn't even look like a cucumber. It looks more like a little tiny uh, odd shaped lemon or a melon of some sort to grow in the garden. Again, adding a diversity so it's not just this, the same old, same old slicer that you're going to use uh, in the vegetable garden. Now we talk oftentimes about um, truly edible landscapes and people are interested in growing quinoa or if not growing it, at least eating it. It's a really, really beautiful plant. And if you look at the color combination that is possible, need to know how to grow it properly, but there's a big difference between what this looks like in the garden and of course what, what it looks like if you buy it and then, and then use it in the kitchen. And I can't, I can't help but bring up milkweed. We grow milkweed for the pollinators. We grow milkweed for the butterflies. Milkweed itself, the blossoms are edible. And so are some of the pods. Now, you, again, you have to know what you're doing, but if you add milkweed to the garden for the pollinators, that also gives you the opportunity to use that as an edible crop. So one way, too, if you really don't want to do your own experimenting with unusual vegetables. There's some new squashes on the market, or on the horizon as an example. Lots of new melons, many, many new vegetables on the horizon or available now. You can either go to farmer's markets, which we talk about, or you can participate in CSAs. And even right now, vegetables are available through CSAs. You might not get the full breadth, but you are likely to get some of, the, some of the vegetables that maybe you have not even experimented with or even tasted before. And it makes everything from growing to harvesting to enjoying to having somebody say, what exactly is that that you have in your hand as you're walking out of the grocery store?